What's going on, socialites? I'm your host, Alexis Joy, and today we are joined by Yahoo Blackwell. How are you doing today? What's going on? What's going on? How has COVID been treating you? We, I mean, it seems like the year is the year is actually ending, but it seems like it's been around forever. So, how have you been coping through all of this? Um, it's been rough in spots, you know. Um, honestly, I've just been making the best out of it. You know, I just I've been trying to, you know, live a normal life as much as possible. But it has its spot, you know, where you, you know, it bothers you and, you know. It alters your life. But for the most part, I just been remaining positive. Absolutely. And now we know you own a Rita's ice cream or Rita's Italian ice. How has COVID impacted your business and how has it been kind of restarting things up as the world is slowly beginning to reopen? Um, it has its ups and downs. Um, you know, it just made things slower, you know what I mean? So but all in all, um, you know, everything is pretty much getting back on track, but it definitely slowed things up. It definitely made it tough, you know what I mean? And But uh, all in all, things are getting back on track, so I'm excited for, you know, the next season. Yes, and now, is this your first franchise? First franchise. Wow. First franchise. <laughs> what made you want to go into the franchise business? Um... Well, I did want to be one of those athletes who, like, um, at the end of their careers, you know, went broke and didn't have nothing to show for it. So I always wanted to invest. That was, that was like, top of, top of my list, being an investor. And um, at first, I was going to get into trucking. I was going to be a trucking guy. But then my mother passed, and Rita's was her uh, favorite place of dessert. And uh, that's why I took to the Raiders. There's, there's definitely family tied to it. Now, the specific location, is there any specific family tied to the location you're at? Um, I'm located at a place called the Baltimore Grand Rotunda. It's in uh, Baltimore City. But um, no, it's, I, it's, once I saw different locations, when I saw the Rotunda, um, that's when I knew, like, this is this is the location. This this way is you know I need to put this brand. Mm -hmm. And now right now there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, especially when it comes to social justice and race issues. So how important do you think it is for people to continue to recycle the black dollar, even if it is a specific franchise? Because a lot of times people get confused between there being a franchise and there being just a chain of restaurants. So first, let's actually backtrack it. Right, right. What would, how, how would you explain to people the difference between like a chain that's owned by one person and a franchise with individual people? You have certain companies that's, you know, they don't have any franchise owners. They're just, um, I believe Walmart might be one of them where you cannot buy into the franchise. As a matter of fact, I believe you can now. But at one point in time, um, if you wasn't a part of that family, you couldn't own Walmart. But um, like my readers, I own that that entity. You know what I mean? So I created a LLC and then DBA is the LLC, uh, the franchise. So it's my part of the business. So I own all of my business. You know what I mean? And now with there being a lot of social injustices, a lot of people wanting to support the black and brown communities and especially recycle the black dollar. Why do you think it's important right, right. for black people to now, not even now, but to take interest in having a franchise, no matter what it is, being a part of something that they can have people come to recycle their dollar? Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, I'm a big advocate for, for my people. You know what I mean? So it's very important that we invest in one another. It's very important that we continue to build within our communities, um, continue to spend amongst each other. That is extremely important. You know, I think that we deserve it more than more than anything. It's, you know, a lot of people want to act like they're only looking for handouts, but um, it was our ancestors who put put the work in to build the United States to be what it is today. So um, it's very important that we 
learn about economics, spend amongst each other, build within the community, franchise, build businesses, build wealth, and, and share that wealth amongst each other. That, I think that's extremely important. That's, and that's definitely something that should be a focal point, especially in 2020. Absolutely. And for you personally, how has it been building a business? How has it been getting into the business, getting involved in the business? How how has your whole process been? It's been tough. You know, it's a journey. It's a journey. Um, people always see the end result. And they always see, you know, when it's done and um, you know, the success from it. But um, it's not easy. You know what I mean? It comes with its growing pains like anything else. And uh, but it's worth having. It's worth having. And I've just been learning to enjoy the process, to enjoy the journey. I take the good with the bad, I take the sweet, sweet, sour. You can't swim without getting wet. It comes with the territory. You know what I mean? So, but um, all in all, it's worth it. But I would tell anybody that's building a business to not get discouraged. This is the opportunity to challenge yourself to grow, to find the solution. So, and, and you know, that may come in many forms. But you gotta push yourself and challenge yourself to figure it out. So you gotta look at it as a positive and not a negative. So every time a problem arises, I look at it as an opportunity to get to grow, to get you know, to learn more, to expand and I'll challenge myself. Nice. And now would you say that during the COVID nineteen pandemic, did you did you have to close or were you already open? Um no, we were actually in the process of finishing the rotunda. But um, things were just very, very slow. You know, banking, uh, contractor, it was just a lot of little hoops that I had to get over. Um, and COVID just made it extremely, extremely tough. But um, again, you know, just going back to what I was saying, I just looked at it as an opportunity to challenge myself. I didn't give up, I didn't get discouraged. Um, you know, I just told myself that. Uh, your dreams are big enough to ask them better. And now as a business or a franchise owner, would you say that something like COVID really kind of opened your eye to a different way of business? Because there's, I mean, no one now, there's all these businesses are having to do things that no one ever thought we could do or kind of try to scramble and figure out a way to maintain the income of money and the flow of money without, you know, having to completely shut down. So would you say that it's it's been beneficial in some ways? Um, not at all. Everybody wants to go back to living <laughs> how they used to. You know, you know what I mean? It's definitely changed the landscape of things. But, um, but yeah, a lot of business are adapting. I'm sure they don't like it. But, um, but it's definitely taught me a lot. It's definitely taught me, you know, things that I should prepare for my next business venture. And um, just some things to be mindful of. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Now, how have you found time to get this business going with such a rigorous schedule for working out? Yeah. You know, I put on so many hats. You know what I mean? Yeah. How yeah. have you been able to kind of balance everything, especially with sleep? Because I know athletes, for athletes, sleep is very, very, very important. Extremely important. Extremely important. Honestly, um, I just talk to God. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I get to that point where it's like just super overwhelming, I just talk to God. Sometimes I just need that time for my brain to just recover. Now, ice cream, I mean, Italian ice, is that necessarily healthy for an athlete's body? <laughs> <laughs> they got vegan, they got, it's a lot of stuff. They got ice cream for dogs. You know, if you're digging out on it, then yeah, you know, you want to have the pot belly jelly. But <laughs> I know a lot of people have been talking about COVID 19 way, like the freshman 15 almost, but like for a longer extended time, just of being at home. How have you been able to maintain uh, like health in your body? Just old school push ups, pull ups, hips, you know. Squats. I took it, you know, retro. You know what I mean? The old school, just doing a lot of cardio and and uh, nutrition. That's that's really the main thing. You know, 
the the herbs the herbs that you put in your body. I'm big on like herbs, you know, uh, you know, sea moss, all that stuff. And now, who are you fighting on November twenty first? His name is uh, Sergio Ramirez. With there being such strict bans on where you can travel to, what borders are open, what borders are closed, how are you feeling, especially given that the pandemic is still not gone, about being in such close, literal, physical contact with somebody that you haven't been around? Is there some process that, or some steps that you all have to take to ensure that you're COVID-free before the fight occurs? Yeah, we all have to um, COVID test. Uh, before we can compete. Um, as far as travel goes, I'm not really worried because, um, you know, one of the things they were saying about COVID was um, it can it really only latches to you if you if you if you have a weak immune system. Mm -hmm. So my they get you know I'm, I'm on top of my nutrition, so um, everybody went to the grocery store and bought toilet paper. Now, do you find yourself when you're not preparing for a fight? Does your mentality, your day to day mentality, change in regards to nutrition and how you work out and how you exercise and stuff like that, or does it does it generally stay the same? It stays the same. Um, I'm always preparing for a fight, so it's part of my lifestyle for me. What do you think your expectations for this fight are? I'm going to knock him out. There we go. He's a tough guy. He's not no, no pushover. But I think that um, he's just dealing with um, different animals. This fight, I think that he's dealing with, uh, you know, someone who's very dedicated. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I make sure I cross every T and dot every I. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely believe I'll, I'll stop. Now, how do you think, because we, we see it time and time again, Social media plays a major part in leading up to the fight. We hear a lot of stuff like, you know, back and forth on social media. For you, how does it play a part in in preparing and building up that like, oh, I'm ready to fight? Yeah, I love social media because, you know, it's a lot of fans and a lot of people that's, you know, really invested in what you do. So I get it's the it's the it's a way to like bring take them along the way with me, you know what I mean? So People can see their training and how they prepare. You know, they can kind of witness the process without having to physically be there. So um, I love using social media as a tool to, you know, just kind of keep everybody in the loop with, you know, my fights and my preparation for the fight. Now, for you personally, do you think, or have you in the past, ever seen it be a matter of uh, it being an issue to where it's like a back and forth with you and your opponent? On social media? You know what? I've never had that problem yet. I've never had anybody like, you know, we had like this huge trash talk on social media. I've never had that problem. Like, you know, we could save the speculation. You, know, you got to deal with me, you know, in a few weeks anyway. Mm hmm. That's very true because social media causes a lot of drama. It does, kind of. And, and, you know, it clouds your judgment in a way where you want to hurt the guy so bad. That you're not, you you you're, you're compromising your skill set because mm -hmm. you're being emotional. You know what I mean? And then that's you know Floyd Mayweather was a master. You know, Matt Floyd could get you so emotional that when when it came time to fight him, you wasn't using the proper punch selection. Yeah, I mean, and definitely speaking about yeah. Floyd, how how because you work with him, right? I did. I did train with Trey Williams. Free time. Free time. How how was that? You can never go wrong with training with Floyd. Man. You know what I mean? It's 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 always Floyd's a legend, and um, you know you can never go wrong with you know picking up um, some gems from um, the Mayweather flag. What would you say are some of the most important things? Um, not that doesn't necessarily have to be boxing, but it could be life related that you have learned from him. Um. One thing I learned about training with them is Floyd is big on not taking punishment. So um, Floyd um, is what we call, um, he has triple crown. We call it a triple crown. What that means is 
he was able to box and cement his legacy. That's the first crown. The second crown was he made a lot of money. And the second, and the, that was the second crown. The third crown is he was able to leave the sport with all five senses still intact. Now, after the fight, what does it look like for you? What is, I mean, regardless of the outcome, what is, what is your, your, your moves after the fight? Is it like, okay, let's keep, you know, continue working out? Or do you give yourself a break, kind of relax, take a vacation, anything like that? Um, this fight I plan on, but normally I just get right back to work. Um, after this fight, I'm going to Maldives. Uh, I got to treat myself. <laughs> That's like a place everybody needs to go, especially yeah, after COVID. Yeah, yeah. We just all need like a break. You have to reward yourself with some Rita's. Oh, you yeah. are. <laughs> what would you say is one of your like go tos from Rita's? My go to is actually is actually uh it's the cantaloupe. That's my I mean put, I put away some cantaloupe and the mango or mango kind of it go it go that that. Now, why would you say that? Oh, uh, uh, I mean, you mentioned earlier being an athlete. It's not something that lasts forever. It's, it's you know, a, you a, have your time, you do it, you put your you put your all into your craft, but you have to consider the after. So uh, why would you say that it's important, aside from of course the 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 constant income of money, but why would you say it's important for people who are athletes or who these, you know, high schoolers or college players who are looking to become professional to start thinking right. about after? They say that ninety percent of athletes end up broke when it's all said and done. So what I try to teach people is um, don't invest in stuff, okay? So we have a habit of getting stuff, right? And we, and we equate that to success. Oh, he got a big, oh, he got, he got a bonus. That's okay, that's just, that's just stuff. You want to buy your assets and allow your assets to buy your stuff. That's what I'm saying. So I didn't go buy a Bentley for the readers. My readers didn't buy a Bentley for me. You know what I mean? So you want to buy your assets and then allow your assets to buy, buy your wants, wants, buy, buy. So, um, you know, I, I tell people all the time, like, you can look good, but your network can still be zero. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't want to make that mistake. You know what I mean? So while I'm fighting, while I have my youth, while my body is still capable, I want to invest. Also, when I have children, I want to be able to actually pass something down. You know what I mean? Now, okay. what other things do you see yourself investing in? Because I know Rita's is probably not the not the end all be all. <laughs> um, real estate, real estate, and then um, maybe other franchises, but definitely uh, one of my next moves is real estate. Uh, I want to do residential and commercial. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a a common misconception that in order to invest or in order to, you know, get started on having a business, you have to already be extremely successful, especially in the black community. A lot of people don't, don't right, see that right. you can start a business from literally nothing. So what would you say to those people who are like, you know what, I, I don't know what I want to do, but I know I want to start a business. What, what are some encouraging words that you can give them to just go ahead and get started? Yes. Get started. You don't have to have, you know, all this money to, to start a business. You know what I mean? I know a guy who started his business with maybe ten thousand. You know what I mean? He saved up ten thousand. He's he's a multimillionaire. So those nights that you go to the club, you know, you gotta tell your buddies, like, look, man, you can't make it. You know, create a timeline for yourself and just start building it. Start building. Um, credit is very important because oh, yeah. you, can, yeah, you can have no money, but if your credit is good, you know what I mean. You can get the funds you need to start your business. Mm -hmm. So it's always it's very it's not difficult. Just just so, just a little bit of discipline to take your part. Mm -hmm. And now, would you say that you got um, any advice or some of your men any mentors that really kind of instilled in you a, a good way to run your business? No, actually, I'm self-taught. I taught myself everything. Um, I woke up one day and I was like, 
well and make a business with it. And I just started reading and reading and reading and I was watching a lot of uh, documentaries on business. I was just studying so much stuff. And then I would, um, I read about Shaq. I read about all these different business modes. Yeah. You know, I read about AZ, I read about anybody I could kind of get my hands on and kind of just study how they did their, how they did their thing. And um, I just educated myself. You know, the internet is like a library. So oh, yeah. I just educated myself and I studied and studied and studied. And then uh, I finally was like, all right, I think I got this. Mm-hmm. And what would you okay. say is your overall key to a successful business? Um, I would say managing your money and great customer service. Oh, yeah. So not just being a business, but actually being a pillar in the community is important. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's important to connect with the people that you're serving. You know, providing the service. So you want it to be where it's 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 a community thing. It's not just about, you know, I'm just trying to get this money. You know what I mean? You want to, you want to build relationships with the community. You want to build relationships with the staff. Uh, I think that's one of the major keys to finding a successful business. And um and like I said, the financing, you know, just you know, um keeping up with your finances is the right way. Mm-hmm. With the location that you're in, what are some things that you foresee yourself and your team doing uh, to give back to the community there? Well, um, I'm going to do a lot. Like uh, I'm a big, big, uh, you know, advocate for doing things for the community and for people. So um, I'm going to do a lot from you know just helping, of course, you know, kids in the area with employment and helping. We're going to do a certain thing where we help like um, some single mothers who can't um, like pay the rent. It's a lot of stuff that I got in mind that I plan on doing to, you know, just help people as much as possible. It's going to be, um, you know, more than just, oh, that's reading. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely going to be a uh, pillar for me. I think that's great. I mean, especially when people see somebody black taking such a major step and doing something very important for the community and a place even to be able to recycle their black dollars. It goes such, such, such a long, long way. It, it, it does. So it I hope to it see does. more people, more black people out here owning franchises and really getting into business where the black dollar can start to be recycled and where we can finally get respect as, well, not me because I don't own a business, but right, people right. can finally get respect as black business owners. I think that's very, very, very important. And I'm so, so happy that you're you're giving back to your community in this way. So thank you, that's, thank that's, you, thank you so, so much for that. I, I'll try to watch the fight and I hope it goes good. I want to see this knockout. I promise you, I'm going to put that work in. That's a goal that I've always wanted to was to fight for WBC. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely got me going the extra mile for this one. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. We really appreciate it.